<laughs> what's up? What's up? My name's Drew. I'm 39. I like long walks on the beach. I like cooking. I like running. I like boating. Oh man, am I sick of going through that process. Who's in the dating pool with me? Anybody? Anybody? Yeah? Yeah? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about then. What about my married couples? Got some married couples out here? Yeah? How long? 20 years? Fucking stay that way. I tell all my married friends, don't get a divorce. Work it out. Do drugs. Drink. Do whatever you gotta do. Counseling. Big proprietor counseling. Do whatever you gotta do. Stay together. Because you don't want to be out here with me in the dating pool. Fuck. I've been on so many first dates. You know, I think first dates now, it should be just like a job interview. I think you should come with three references or more. You should have them right there. You should show up to the first date, slide that paper across the table. <laughs> you should have three references. Friends, family, former people you've dated. I think that'd be a great way to do it. Like, yeah, you know, he's a great fuck, but intimacy, love, he's terrible. <laughs> oh shit you know I've often found too it's really hard to be on the same page with the person you're dating you know their their profile might say one thing oh I'm looking for a relationship only looking for long term and then you show up on the you show up on the date and you realize they want friends with benefits or something you're like hold up hold up you're in the whole Facebook Wait a minute, wait a minute, let me put down the long-term relationship book. Let me, let me pick up, yeah, there we go, page 23, 23, ah, there we are. Okay, yeah, yeah, I can do that, I can do that. <laughs> I think that's what a lot of it's about, is you got to be on the same page. And a lot of that's not happening out there. Oh, man, especially if you're, if you're on the dating sites. Yeah, they're popular. Huge percentage of dating now is is happening through our phones and dating apps. Who's out there on the dating apps? Throw some out there for me. I want to I want to hear which ones you're on. Yeah, Tinder. Yeah, always Tinder. Yeah, uh, Bumble. Bumble's good. All right. So what I found is basically the sites are aptly named for exactly the experience you're going to get. Even the logos on some of them. Are exactly what you're gonna get you know let's take tinder for example tinder it's got the little flame logo yeah so you know I was a boy scout once you use tinder to start a fire but in this case it's not a good fire we're talking about a fucking dumpster fire here so just throw some wood on top of tinder maybe a little gasoline and just light that fucking shit on fire tinder is awful ah Guys, if you're looking for if you're looking for amateur OnlyFans accounts from around the world, that's the one to go to right there because that's pretty much all you're gonna get. You're gonna get solicitations to fucking OnlyFans accounts. That's it. You can swipe for days, and that's all you're gonna get. If it looks too good to be true, it is. <laughs> what about uh, what about Hinge? Hinge. Anybody tried that one? Yeah, Hinge is a little different format. You, you can shoot little cute uh, voice things like, hi, how you doing? So they can hear how shitty your voice is or, you know, hear, hear how bad you're going to be in person. <laughs> you can even shoot little, little videos too. That's another one. Yeah. But again, Hinge, just like the name sounds, fuck, need some WD-40, need some lithium grease or something because you could try to pry that door open all you want. You're not going to get shit. You're not going to get shit. You're not going to get get in that door through Hinge. Not in my experience. Ah, and there's plenty of fish. Plenty of fish. Plenty of fish has been around a long time. I've been online dating off and on, but I started about 10, 12 years ago, and plenty of fish was in the game. One of the OGs. But man, ah, plenty of fish is like trying to fish in the Dead Sea. It's like trying to fish in Lake Elsinore. <laughs> you see Lake, Lake Smelsinore? Jesus. All you're going to catch is a venereal disease. That's pretty much it. That's all you're going to catch from plenty of fish. Plenty of trash. Oh my gosh. 
Don't even, don't even bother. If you have it on your phone, just delete it. Delete it. They're not all bad, though. They're not all bad. Okay, Bumble. You guys heard of Bumble? Yeah, 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 I see some hands. Yeah, Bumble. Bumble's by far the best because it puts the power in your hands, women. Yeah. You have to send the first message. Yeah, exactly. But, like I said, just like the name sounds, it's like the little bees come floating around and they're like, hey, hey, how's it going? Hey, hey, whoa, whoa, stop stinging me, fuck, go away, <laughs> go away, Jesus. Yeah, lots of dates, but I've been stunned way too many times from Bumble. Ah, you know, I've even resorted, I've even resorted to in-person speed dating. In-person speed, it does exist, guys. Pandemic is over, pandemic is over. You can go meet people in person, but the, the results are no different. The results are no different. It's basically like online dating, except now you show up, you gotta get the physical thing over, you know, like swiping off, she's cute, he's cute, whatever. But now if you don't think they're cute, if you don't get into them physically, you have to sit there. You still have to sit there for a very awkward five minutes and chat with this person. Because you don't want to be that person that just sits down, yeah, I'm not interested. <laughs> you can't do that. You can't do that. The people around you will catch notice, and you won't get anywhere. So, yeah, it's a, it's a little awkward in that respect. You, you can't get away. You have to sit there and commit for five minutes and act like you're interested. <laughs> no different results. I had really high hopes for that. I feel like I'd do better in person, but, yeah, you know, the online speed dating. Awful, awful. You know, another thing going on in the dating world, let's just get it out here in the open. Ladies, I'm sure you've experienced this. It's an awkward subject. The dick pics. Yeah, they're out there. Who's been sent a dick pic? Come on, raise your hands. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, guys, guys, come on, let's be honest here. Who was sent the dick pic? Yeah, yeah, we all have at some point or another, right? Well, what I've learned is there's a reason people are doing it. There's a reason. It's so prevalent out there. Because ladies, actually, some of them, or a majority of them, they like it. But guys, you got to up your dick pic game, man. There's, there's a right and wrong way to do it, okay? Okay? So I'm going to talk a couple ways to do it here. What you don't want to do... You need to have a nice flattering dick pic. What you don't want to do is sit there and beat off ah, like that oh, and hanging out like that ah, and then snap a picture. That's not how you want to do it. You don't want that shit looking beat red like it's been beat to death. Okay? What you want to go for, what you want to go for is the what I call the Joey Tribbiani. You want to be like, you want your dick pic to be like, how you doing? How you doing? <laughs> and now you do that, you get that shit, get that shit to like three quarters shove, right? And then like maybe hang it out, you know, just hanging out of your boxers or something. Don't give the whole farm away right away. You, you want to leave something to the imagination. You don't want to be like pants down, beating it off to its beet red rig. <laughs> that's, that's not how you want to do it. That's not how you want to do it. Am I right, ladies? Am I right? Yeah, some of you like a good dick pic, all right? You know, you know who you are. And it's so funny because you're the ones that'll be on your profiles, be like, don't send me a dick pic. Oh my gosh, that's so disgusting. And then you start messaging them and you don't, you don't go there, but she goes there. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know who you are. Yeah, I know who you are. Oh man, yeah, dating, dating. So last year I came back into the dating pool and it had been six years. I'm gonna get a little vulnerable here. It's been, it had been six years since I had had anything. When I say anything, I mean no kissing, no sex, nothing. Now that's a story on its own. We're not gonna go there, but that's where I was. That's where I found myself. So I got back into dating and I was like, you know, it's probably gonna happen. It'll happen naturally. That's not what I was after. I was not one of those dudes. I was trying to go about it in a natural way. I figured it would happen along the course of dating. 
what I didn't expect was the roller coaster of emotions and rounding the bases again. I had to round the fucking bases again. Like I was in fucking middle school. Jesus. You know, a couple dates in, I got to make out. Wow, that was amazing. Remember, remember, remember your first kiss? It was literally what it was like. Kind of took me back. It was kind of fun. It was kind of fun, not gonna lie. It's like, wow, this is, I forgot what this felt like. I like a good kiss. You know, then a couple dates later with maybe a different woman, I got to kiss her and I got to fondle some titty. I forgot what that was like. Got to do a little motorboat. <laughs> yeah, you guys like a good motorboat. Yeah. Oh man, that was, that was good. Got the libido going. I was like, fuck. Felt like I was 16 again. It was uncontrollable at times. Man. Then I finally I met this hot nurse. All right. Dating had been going terrible. Met this hot nurse. She hits me up through Bumble. She said, look, she's 28. I just want to fuck. I'm like, well, you're in luck. That's exactly what I wanted to do. <laughs> Dating had been going shitty. I'd been trying to put my feelings out there. Gotten them stomped all over. So I was like, it's fucking perfect. So we started dating a little bit. She came over. This was all like within a week period too. Went on, went on one date, we liked each other physically and all that. And then the next date, got a little bit closer, made out. And then finally, you know, the time was coming. Took her out of my boat, we went out on the lake. Had a great time, we went to dinner. She wore a cute little dress. Went back to my place, we were out in front of the lake. She was straddling my fucking lap. It was gonna happen right there. And homie wasn't, wasn't even there. Wasn't even at the party. I'm like, hey bro, bro, hello. Hey, hey, it's, it's, it's your turn. It's, it's, you're up bro, you're up. <laughs> Nowhere to be seen. Ah, oh, that is the worst feel. I think it's worse than heartbreak people. Ladies, guys, guys, you, somebody's been there. Come on, don't lie to me. Yeah, it's awful. Jesus, ladies, it basically like, imagine being completely in that mood, you're wet, you're ready to go, but you have a chastity belt on, and you've lost the fucking key. It's gone. You can't access that. You're done. You can't even, you can't even take care of yourself. It's not going to happen. That's what it's like for us. You don't realize the pressure. We have to raise the drawbridge before we can give you anything. It's a lot of pressure. Well, being the nurse that she was, she's like, hey, why don't you hit up one of those online generic ED sites? And no sooner had those words come out of her mouth, my entire fucking Facebook feed was all dick pills. All of it. Yeah, those phones, man. You gotta be careful with those phones. They're listening. Big man is listening. Jesus, I spent the I spent the next three months going through those ads, scrolling through my irrelevant, irrelevant. You know, you can you can choose the different options. Too close to home. Too that one, that's a funny one. Too close to home. Uh, I didn't choose too close to home most of the time because it was too close to home. I was like, nah, I'm not. I don't need Facebook to know intimate things about me. I just put irrelevant, like any man would. Irrelevant topic. I don't need that shit. <laughs> Meanwhile, face is just like, yeah, we we heard you. <laughs> we heard you. <laughs> uh, so I picked one. You know, I picked one. There's a million fucking choices. There's one with tigers on it. I'm like, I don't know. That might be a little too aggressive. So I, I picked one and, you know, did, did my little bit of research. Did the awkward little uh, online uh, chat with the doctor. Well... Why do you, uh, why do you think you need this, sir? Well, sir, I need a boner. <laughs> Just gonna be frank with you. I need a boner. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck do you think I'm here for? Jesus. Yeah, so I chose, you know, I've, I've done drugs back in the day. I was always that guy. I was like, go big or go home. Yeah, that was me. Yeah, you can't do that. You can't do that with boner pills, guys. Or be careful. Be prepared. <laughs> You know, you get the 25 milligram, you can do 50 milligram, or you can do the 100 milligram. So what do you think I chose? 
That's right. 100 milligrams, baby. <laughs> Go big. <laughs> oh, Jesus. So, you know, I get it in the discreet packaging in the mail. And uh, it says, you know, you read the instructions, you know, eat it on an empty stomach, you know, when you eat it on a big fatty meal and all that. So she comes over and, uh, you know, we have a little meal. I had it beforehand, you know. And, uh, man, let me tell you, you start getting that anxiousness, you know. You know, like if you've done hallucinogens or something before, you know what I'm talking about. Where you're like, okay, when's it going to kick in? When's it going to kick in? But let me tell you, Pfizer, Pfizer's going to let you know when it's going to kick in. There will be no doubt when it kicks in. It starts, it starts with an elevated heartbeat. You're like, all right. What did I do here? Did I just, did I just snort a, did I just snort a big fucking line, or did I take some ED medication? Because this is just feeling a little uncomfortable. <laughs> then you start getting the, you start getting the sweats a little bit. It's like ah, start getting little sweats in the armpits. Yeah, but it doesn't, it doesn't just give you a boner right away. You still have to, you still have to get the party started. So we sit down on the couch. She touches my leg, and it's like. Well, bam! I'm like, holy shit, man. Had I not had, I put something comfortable on. I put on, I had, I had swimming trunks on with nothing under it. And thank God, because had I not, I would have had to fight a zipper. Bad shit could have happened. I could have broke my dick had I not had comfortable pants on for this. It was unreal. <laughs> so... We took it back to the bedroom and she got the best 10 pumps of her life. <laughs> oh shit. Six years broken, finally. Ah, oh, relief, the relief. But then afterwards, you know, I had to go take that awkward piss. And it was like this, I'm like, ah, over the toilet. It's like, ah, fuck, god damn it. You know, for a minute, I thought I was going to have to make that awkward call to the paramedics. Like, yeah, I just took some Viagra, and uh, it's been four hours, and that shit's not going down. <laughs> I mean, seriously, it was that potent. It was, it was scary. It was actually freaking kind of scary. Oh, man. Good times, though. Good times. Don't go big and go home with it. Yeah, be careful with that stuff. Be careful with that stuff. Ah. I even resorted to, you know, in the dating, I was like, you know what? Let me try a nudist resort. Let me try a nudist resort. I like to hang out with my wang out. Why, why the fuck not? I'm not shy. There's one right here in Corona. Yeah, Glen Eden. Who's been to Glen Eden? Yeah, somebody? Nobody? Guys, you are missing out. Missing out. Actually, a very nice facility. I highly recommend it. So every year... They have a they have a naked 5K. I like to run, I like to be naked. I'm like this is a perfect combination. Yeah, great experience, great experience. Although I gotta I gotta say you know you get the starting crowd with everybody everybody around. It was a little awkward, you know, showing up to the start line for that one. You're just like hey hey excuse me whoa excuse me hey watch where you're putting that thing watch where you're putting that thing. <laughs> oh shit, yeah. You know, you don't want to show up. You don't want to show up to the start line with like a massive boner. That would be a really awkward way to start the race. You'd have to be dealing with it while you're running. Wha bam, wha bam, wha bam, wha bam. <laughs> yeah, no, that wouldn't be comfortable. That wouldn't be comfortable. But you do have to get in a rhythm. I realized after the start gun went off, because your junk is kind of bouncing in an awkward direction. You know, balls one way, Johnson one way. You got to kind of get that shit in a rhythm. But I did find it, you know, a very freeing, very freeing experience. Uh, it was good. Didn't meet any ladies. No, unfortunately, the crowd there, you're talking like, you know, probably about 45 to 60 years old. So, yeah, it wasn't, uh, wasn't that great in that respect. But, uh, yeah, guys, you know, en enjoy yourselves. Uh, if you're married, stay married. If you're out there in the single life I am, be careful. Have fun. And enjoy yourself. Thank you. Thank you.